All right, if you take good care of your stuff, you might be fortunate enough to be driving around in a minty old GMT 400 and get all those cat calls from the people. Nice truck, buddy. But more than likely, you're broke. And you Googled, how do I put $1,000 into a rusty old piece of crap and still be socially accepted by my friends? In this video, we're gonna grab some stuff from Amazon. We're gonna spruce this thing up so you might actually be able to go on a date, possibly a second date, and be socially accepted from 10 feet away. Here we go. Now we do have to do some things to the truck and we don't even know how much that's gonna cost to get it legal for the road. We have to make sure the tires are good and the uh, brakes are good. But um, there's a lot of simple little things we can do it just to kind of breathe some new life into the truck. We did the same thing with that truck. It did not look like that when we got it, but we have a full parts list on that generation if you found a nice clean truck in your area doing that because it didn't take much to take that from an old farm truck into something that does get attention when you go through town but um for the sake of this video we are going to be talking about this generation which would be your 99 to 07 classics uh gmc and chevy silverado i don't know how we get holes in our hood like this is the carpet i would be able to see my engine <laughs> well the rad support anyway i don't know how that happens so we're gonna try and keep our eyes open while we're working on it see if any of these come into the local scrap yards and trade a case of beer for a hood and a fender possibly um and then maybe a grill as well but before we get into it we kind of got to figure out what we have and what we have is a southern ontario vehicle and if you do not under oil your vehicles if you do not take care of your vehicles or wash them they will look like this within 15 years so this is an 06 this video was filmed in 2023 so it's about 15 16 years old and even though the doors aren't bad the rockers are completely gone i don't know what we're going to do about the rockers we might try to just let them go for now um, but this was an old farm truck so um story of it was that it did pull a camper it's the heavy duty version which i think has the 411 rear end the rear end probably has a leak and when i looked at it um it actually has a wheel seal leaking on the inside and what happened when all the oil leaked out of the diff is that the diff actually exploded <laughs> and the story that i got was that he was driving along and a chunk from the diff and the drive shaft flew into a field and actually lit the field on fire and i wish we had that video for you but we don't so we picked this thing up super cheap because it's rotten everywhere. This this is this is structural paint right now. If you if you push really hard on this, that is a hole. <laughs> but um, we got this truck because I actually have a differential laying in my yard. We picked it up super cheap, so we'll do a couple swaps on it, um, and then uh, and then throw some Amazon money at it just to get her back up to par again. So right now. It's driving around without a rear drive shaft. I'm sure the transfer case is completely empty. <laughs> and he's driving around in four wheel drive. 260,000 kilometers, which is about 170,000 miles, somewhere around there. So if nothing else, we just yank the six liter out and put it in something else, like a GTO or a Fairmont. I, I, I figure we couldn't lose. Okay, so the interior isn't bad. And of all the generations of trucks that I bought, these seats are still the most comfortable. Now this, just being a winter beater, we'll probably leave it alone because it only has one little hole in the driver's seat right here. But you can buy all new reupholstering for this and have a whole new seat, whether it's the cloth or the leather. And we have a video on that when I fixed up my 05 Silverado. So you can check that out, how we reupholstered that or find another seat that's close to it. Um, what we did was take the good cloth off of a plain seat and put it around one that had lumbar support and power. So um, that option is, uh, is out there for it. The rest of the interior really isn't bad. In Ontario, we do not get the, cra the cracked dashes. So that's a plus. Um, and everything seems to work inside other than I can't get my, my fourth door open. So we got to look at that. We got to get a couple new door handles and, um, we do know that the four wheel drive works. So, um, it's got a fifth wheel rail in the back, so we could tow something heavy, which I think is why the diff blew, but I don't think it's got the cord in the bed for the trailer plug. Um, 
We have one good tire, I think. This one's okay, has some meat and wood pass the safety, but um, the other three are flat or bald. Let's see how she starts. Okay, so R06 does not start very good at all. Like, it, it's probably been a while since it's had a tune up, but the problem is we're on a tight budget. And when we spend all our money on a double den, we don't have enough for service. So, the parts stores in town, they all want money when we buy stuff, but the parts store in my yard has has parts available too. So there's a couple, couple cylinder heads. Let's see if we can take the spark plugs out of this. Now we want the truck to start, definitely on the first date, but we don't want to go new spark plugs because I gotta be honest, some of the best times in my pickup trucks have been when we were stuck by the side of the road on second, third, fourth dates. So this should get us fat past the first date. OEM AC Delcos, you do the dirty finger wipe test, make sure that the ceramic's not cut or cracked. And we got a nice burn in this engine, we got some tips left. They'll be fine, no problem. I didn't, I didn't lose a single thing. <laughs> Easy, it's not basketball, Rich. <laughs> I am the rebound guy. <laughs> yeah, not the smooth stroke guy. <laughs> I <got> it! <laughs> Okay, so since you bought an old rusty Chevy, we can tell that you are responsible with your money. You're not making payments to the bank. You're not owing anybody anything. So the problem is because we know you're responsible, there's a lot of responsibilities that come with being a responsible person. And one of those responsibilities is uh, driving your friends around, you being DD, because you know what? They're making payments on the bank. They're very upset about that. They have to go to the bar on weekends and and uh, take the edge off because next Monday, another $1,200 is due to pay for their brand new Dodge or their brand new Fords. The problem is nobody can get into the back of this truck because you know, the door handle's broken. And nobody wants to climb through the back seat to get in. So we hit up Amazon and we got nice cheap door handles and actually cheaper to replace both of them than it is just one, which is odd. But um, on the upside though, when your friends are loaded and you're driving them home, you just stop at a gas station and you get everybody to chip in 20 bucks for gas because you know it's a six liter, it's horrible on fuel. But then 10 minutes later, you can pull up to another gas station and say, guys, uh, I need 20 bucks for gas. And they'll pony up 20 more bucks and be like, didn't we just pay you for gas? Just shut up, Gary, you're drunk. And 20 minutes later, you stop at another gas station. I had guys, 20 bucks, I need more money. And that will more than pay for the door handles and lots of other stuff inside. Here we go. There's only two seven millimeter screws that kind of hold this thing in place. Some broken glass there. What happened there? This cover pops right off. And the door handle comes off. And then should be able to pull. You can remove that very carefully. And don't do it when it's cold. You kind of have to kink this one underneath the seat belt holder there. But it is possible. So there is your latch assembly and the rusty, rusty truck. Now we pull the handle, you can see it's doing something, but it's not actually doing something. So now, I'm wondering if the linkage is just seized down below, give her a little heat. 
see what we can come up with. Okay, so that latch, um, basically what it is, is um, just a cam lock that goes in behind it. So your door latch is like this, it can't flip up until you lift up on that latch and then it has room to swing. So that's all working. I think my linkage is just seized. Um, the problem is it pivots in between two brackets. So it can only heat up one of these brackets and it's the link linkage that pivots in between the bracket. So I've disconnected the linkage, took vice grips and stuck them on there to hold the latch up. And I think just a sledgehammer and a six by six to see if we can open this door. That's the vice grips on the linkage holding it up. That is the six by six. And that is a block of wood making sure that the top latch is undone so that only the bottom latch is holding. Now, there's not much left of this rocker. I might rip the whole rocker off. Love it when a plan comes together. We'll take this latch out with the four screws that are four nuts on the top there. And we will uh, lube the snot out of that. Yes. Now you can soak this overnight in whatever you want and it'll free up over in the morning. WD-40 rust penetrant or just WD or some ATF or some diesel. Okay, right, so I had this sitting in ATF and acetone. It smells amazing. And now I can, look at that. It goes nice and free. We can pop that back on again and the kiddos will even be able to open the door on their own. Um, don't clean it off. Just leave all that crap in there. It's been sitting in there the uh, better part of the day. But um, don't clean it off. Just put it back all oily and gross because it'll keep lubricating and every time it gets used, it's, it's fine. You can add some if you want. Just throw that in there. Total cost, zero. So as of when this video was made, this truck is 18 years old. Now, if you're 18, that's like 80 in human years for a truck in Ontario. So you're going to make some noises. When you sit down, you're going to go, oh. And when it goes over a bump, it's going to go, Arr! and and the doors are going to click. And the very simple solution to that is a cheap Ototo in-dash car entertainment. Now this is, this says right here, made in USA. So you know it's good quality. So since this is the poverty version of this track, we've got crank handles, we've got on the floor, four wheel drive. We only have AM and FM and not even a CD player. So if you're on a date, you can't even impress your lady friend with a CD. Oh, stay there. So let's take the radio out. GM's awesome. It's basically just click together. You're halfway there. Couple seven uh, millimeter bolts right here. And you got the old radio out. There you go, antenna. I'm gonna sell this on eBay. It'll be $780. But we're gonna see what's involved in this little guy here. That is the skinniest radio I've ever seen. Definitely not your six disc CD changer. You know, back when I was in high school, my six, my six disc CD player was in the trunk, but uh, Wow, it's got GPS and everything. It's just one giant heat sink and a screen. <laughs> That's all it is. But, but I like that it's got actual buttons for volume. Up and down. That's all I really care about is mute and volume up, volume down. Very nice. Microphone. I like it. Okay, so we bought this plug that is this half and that just gets buck connected to this half. Now that's the hardest part actually, is just doing a neat job and making sure that all the buck connectors are nice and tight. So I'll plug that in, we're halfway there. So we got an extra wire for the backup camera, which we'll throw in there. Steering wheel controls, which is this one, which we don't have, poverty model. And then the power for the backup camera. So we gotta hook that one up too yet. So we'll hook that up one to the reverse lights. Okay, it's got the GPS kind of tucked away there that when you're kind of sitting here and driving, you don't really see it. You got the microphone up on there and just tuck the wire down through there. And then behind the dash, behind the gauges, and then coming out right here. Everything's nice and neatly tied up. We got our plug here that we can plug into this guy. So we got GPS, we need an antenna adapter. 
So that's the, they're all in the link, so you can make this 100% complete. And then uh, two little brackets, the long sides go on the side of the unit. And then they use the tiny little screws that go right in the very end there. You see the three there. And then this bracket goes onto the side, making sure that the screws don't hit the unit. And then the only thing to do is take these nubs off because they get in the way of the bracket. Just take a knife and cut those off. That's not really working. I can either heat up the knife, side cutters, grinder, I'll get them off. And then bolt it in. That should be about it. Until we hook up the backup camera, the trigger for that. And we'll put the USB, I think, sticking out through here so we can plug something in and lay it right here for the sound. Easy peasy. All right, so the number one mods for these trucks is actually not what you might think. Um, it's actually this shorter antenna. And I don't know if it's because, you know, young guys are feeling threatened by a long antenna, but then I read the manual and this little guy increases the frequency and frequency is more important than a long antenna. Okay, so we got our stereo installed. Looks nice and neat with the cover and all the extras on it, but um, just getting the squeaking to stop is not enough to impress your friends or your girlfriend or your girlfriend's dad. Um, if you really want to impress them, you got to be able to pull a trailer. So with a trailer, you got to have a brake controller because you still got to be safe. So it's the easiest brake controller you can ever um, install. This plugs right into a box underneath there, and this wires directly to that. That's it. All the wiring, all the other wiring is already done. So we'll unwrap these and plug them in, and bam, we can stop a trailer because we all know that the brakes on this truck are not very good. Okay, so behind that box is this controller, or this little control box, and your Reese trailer plug plugs right into that one. And then oddly enough, this green wire right here is your trigger wire for your backup camera on the thing. So you can splice into that green wire and you'll have your, you don't have to run a wire from your reverse lights all the way to the front. Um, you can just tie into that wire nice and neat. So I've already ran a green wire to my stereo. So we're going to do those at the same time. And then brake controller is already functional. I'll just plug that in wherever. I like it over here just so that when you get in, you don't accidentally bump it as you're coming in and hurting yourself. So we'll mount it right here, nicely right by the four-wheel drive controller there. We're all set. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, I have a really nice brake controller and I know that I have a truck that can pull a trailer, but how will the average pedestrian know that I have a big truck? I mean, my Dodge friends have meters so big they're knocking pedestrians off the sidewalk when they're out. Fear not, we got you covered. The tow meters for these things are now super cheap. And actually these are a very, very good addition to your truck. And it's literally three bolts that bolt it on and it takes about three minutes per side to throw on some nice mirrors. And you too can slide these out and hit random passerbyers in the back of the head as you pass by. All right, now, I was talking about having fun in the front of the truck. You can also have fun in the back of the truck, but nobody wants to stare at a dull light like this. A couple more bucks off Amazon, you can pull this faded out little brake light and cargo light out and replace it with a nice shiny new one. Look at that. LED. Oh, I should probably leave that on because I'm going to get it dirty comes with a gasket. Make sure that uh, you have a good seal on that because um, otherwise, before you know it, you'll have leaks inside. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But...
come up. Okay, so in, in all seriousness, we bought a we bought a six liter and it came with a truck. Um, the truck was pretty rough. Basically, we have another good six liter that outlasts our vehicles in Ontario. So we're definitely giving it the premium treatment with some Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic. And this is also available on Amazon. Brought to your door. The Pennzoil gives us the confidence that our, at least our engine won't leave us by the side of the road. And if the rest of the truck falls apart, you know, at least we've got a good 6 to put in, you know, something, anything. You hate them, but you know you love them. They're still the best cheap engine for your swap. So they're right on the money there. Now, if this was uh, an F-150 of the same era, it'd be a whole other ball game. But literally the spark plugs putting them back in is the easiest thing. There's none that you can't get at, and they all come out in just one piece. It's amazing. Tighten her up. Put the plug wires back on again. I cleared the codes because of a, it was a misfire, was why the engine was on on an EVAP. It's always an EVAP. But uh, let's see how it sounds. It's a little squeaky. better than it did before so that's a good sign all right a few more things so i have no idea what to do about this rust oh oh yeah i do if you see the really expensive flares they have these screws around the outside now somebody might park beside you and go i bet that truck is rotten that's why he screwed that flare on there but if you put these screws on all the flares he just did it on purpose. It's 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 not because it's rot. Look at that. Nice tight fit. Tighter than factory. I'll keep all the water out. <laughs> keep all the water out. <laughs> now make sure you measure and you put the screws evenly spaced. <laughs> Otherwise, you might look like a hack job. <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. Okay, so the internet is a wonderful place. And we have discovered Bushwhacker rocker cover protectors. And this is gonna be the best thing since sliced cheese in Ontario because we got quotes to fix this. And to fix it properly, $3,500. To put a fake skin over top, $1,500. Bam. Ready for a safety. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> no rust happening here. <laughs> no, nothing to see here. <laughs> and she'll never know. Who's going to know? Nobody's going to know. <laughs> Very nice. We just need a little Rust-Oleum restoration right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, they do just stick on with 3M tape. And there's not a whole lot to 3M tape to. <laughs> so I have to just rivet a little bit of a bracket onto the uh, back of the inner rockers. Some of the inner, mm. inner rockers are still on. It even comes with a cab corner. Very nice. So I would never use these on good rockers that are in good shape because the salt and the water and everything's going to get underneath there and really accelerate the unplanned rapid disintegration of your uh, rockers as elon musk would say but i think that for a truck like this that has a solid frame that it's not a unibody that we doesn't matter whether the rockers are really there or not we're not supposed to go through safety without holes in the body and we don't have any holes in our bodies so uh from 10 feet away perfect it might shock some of you guys but 50 bucks is actually a case of beer in canada that gives you 24 good tasting canadian beer but uh you get what you pay for so we got a nice hood without a hole in it and a broken bug deflector
Yeah, it'll do. That's been on since new. October 06. Oh. Yeah, we gotta put it back on. I want that Amazon. That's another hundred bucks, I bet. Well, it used to be a hundred bucks. All right, so I knew that there was an issue with the back axle, and I figured there was some damage done, but I crossed my fingers, the drive shaft pretzel, and um, I figured maybe the transfer case is okay, and I think it is, because we're driving around on it. But um, on further inspection of us trying to fit a drive shaft, it's a little bit wiggly, and we realized that the adapter between the transmission and the transfer case is no good. Luckily, Amazon will have it here tomorrow. So we can pull this uh, transfer case off and we'll pull that adapter off. And next to no money, we are on the road again. Here we go. Oh, we got lots of brake. Wow, nice. We don't have to do brakes. On the front, we definitely yeah. have to do one on the back. My Silverado will not be going on the road this winter. So I'm taking the tires. <laughs> so these are the Toyo Open Country ATs. I did run them on the Silverado before I pulled it off the road. I've been on the road for two years, but these are my favorite tires for trucks. Yeah, from here it looks pretty good, doesn't it? And like I said, from 10 feet away, you are gonna be socially acceptable. And I promise, if you put a little bit of effort into your vehicle, you'll get that second date. Um, so keep in mind, this is our winter beater. We're not going above and beyond to make that thing perfect because that keeps us away from our projects that we do make perfect, like my Silverado, the 24 valve P-Pump uh, compound turbo Cummins swap project and the Coyote Swap Bronco. If you haven't seen those projects, um, get caught up. I'm back in the shop working on those. Um, and keep in mind that all of the projects that we used are available on Amazon. And if it was my, my first choice, definitely engine, maintain your engine, oil filter, um, those Bushwhacker, Rocker covers will get you by for another year or two. So your rockers are starting to go, you know what? I think a couple hundred bucks just to cover that up and um, put some makeup on a pig is definitely worth it. And those tow mirrors, um, I love the tow mirrors, although those, the detents are in the wrong spot. So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna take a better look at those uh, and see if there's something we can do, but it seems like they're either detented too far forward or detented too far back, right? Where the sweet spot is like a high high spot and it wants to detent one way or the other. So I'm sure it'll be okay for what we needed to do. It looks 100% better. I don't, when you maintain your vehicles like this, you don't get pulled over as often um, unless you're doing something stupid. But uh, when you have rusty vehicles with holes in it, you're asking to get pulled over, especially if you're pulling a trailer. So try to maintain your stuff, try to, 
try to um, take some pride in it, keep it clean, you know, keep the interior clean, keep it smelling fresh. We've got air fresheners for sale too on the website, so check that out. And uh, if you're getting the itch to buy a new vehicle, just spend a couple days on your old vehicle, spruce it up, do a couple extra little things to it, and it's like a whole new vehicle. If I let the previous owner drive it again, he'd probably want to buy it back. <laughs> so remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich, get out there and work on it. Um, but in the meantime, we'll be driving that back and forth to town and to the scrapyard and to the dump, and we'll be working back inside the nice warm shop. Here we go.